Ladies, gentlemen, chefs at home, please ready up. You don't want to miss today's recipe. Whatever you're doing, stop, drop, and roll, because we're about to do something massive in today's episode. We're joined by someone who's no stranger to your For You page. I'm sure when you want to laugh, you go on his page, and you just laugh for hours on end. In studio with us today is Gatsby. Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing, Gatsby? Yeah, you doing good? I'm doing good. That's soft, bro. We're going to talk about it a lot today. I'm doing good. Um, I'm a bit sick. Yeah. Okay, I'm very sick. <coughs> but I'll be fine. I'll be fine. We'll we stuck it through. Um, we're going to talk about it a lot today. Mm. Uh, we've got some confessions that have come through from the people that you need to advise them with. They're having, uh, hey, people are, are being rocked by the world. I'm the worst person to take advice from. Huh. Huh. <laughs> that, that, that means advice is about to bang. Yeah. Uh, we're going to speak about your childhood. Mm. Um, and everything else really that contributes to you being where you are right now. Um, but of course, before that, we need to listen to the bones, listen to the muscles with the young icebreak. So tell us the story behind your most embarrassing childhood nickname or nickname in general, actually, and how yeah. it came about. So to be fair, I kind of, I kind of take off to my father when it comes to, to head size and proportion. Okay. Okay. So, so, you know, they gave me a nickname. Most of my nicknames throughout my entire childhood had been regards to that. So my mom gave me my first um, nickname. She called me Clemeza after this one, I don't know, radio presenter. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Damn. head. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm, so, mm. yeah. Damn. So was that something they roasted you about in school? Yeah, it was, oh, constantly, daily. Yeah, what you did know, they it say? Wasn't, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a complete day without at least one... One joke. What's the craziest thing they said? My best friend, actually. Yeah, I don't know if you guys remember that, that that parody, that Fast and Furious parody. Which one? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it's called. Yeah. But this is this is a this is a this is a Vin Diesel dupe. Yeah. And um, you know they kind of gave him and the na- the shape the, the shape of his head. Yeah. They kind of called it like a big head. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, and then that's that's what they called you. Yeah, yeah. That's huh. my my best friend's name for me till this day. I think. Really? Yeah. Okay, that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> but it wouldn't be your best friend if it wasn't like that. Yeah, of course. So we have a meal prepared for you today. Um, it's a lasagna. Uh, apparently that's your favorite meal. Comfort meal. So you'll let me know if it bangs. Yeah. Took me long to make, but you know, you yeah. know, I th- I think it's good. I think it's good. I yeah, think it's we'll, good. we'll see. Yeah, you'll Honestly, be the judge really. of that. That's Let's start cool. at the beginning, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are you born? Durban. Durban? Durban. Yeah, Parkland, yeah. Parkland, Parkland, uh, Parkland Hospital. Yeah. But I don't think that hospital's open anymore. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, and then you stay in Durban for how long? Um, I took it seven, actually. But now we, like, alternate between Durban and... Maritzburg, because I'm from I'm from Maritzburg. That's yeah, kind of where I grew up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but now we just alternate between Durban and Maritzburg. Yeah. So there was a guest we had a while ago, um, and he said that he's also from <coughs> an area in Maritzburg, mm. um, and he was saying that there's a lot of like racism there because the towns are small and 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 and. Is that an experience like you've ever come across, or uh-huh. is that not really the Maritzburg you know? I've never experienced like blatant racism in my entire life. I don't think, or maybe I've just not been aware of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But where I grew up, no, it hasn't been. Yeah, it was it just chilling. Huge it issue. was just yeah, chilling. Yeah, yeah. But what what was the culture like there, bro? Like, was it like kapoor every day? No, was it not like, even. Like, I was locked. Yeah, I was locked in the house, dude. I wasn't allowed to go anywhere. If you can, I don't have any crazy stories. I never snuck at the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never went to any house parties on Fridays. Like I was literally a uh, school home. Friend's house kid dude. Was it Was it like uh, The smart kid Who doesn't want to go out Or was like The bad boy Who wants to go out And mom's like Nah bro I, I don't know where you think you are But it's not there <laughs> Depends on the day really Yeah But mostly the first one Like I just don't I just didn't go out And It was mainly me in the books yeah yeah, yeah 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 And what was like The love subjects that you had Like the subjects that you loved Throughout It sound crazy But I really like math Really only, like math, yeah, because it was it was like the only subject that really made me think, and physics as well. Yeah, yeah, like maths and physics. I was, I love those are probably my two favorite subjects. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I'm sure like you carried that love for those subjects down the line. 
Oh, yeah, to this day, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> but let's let them bring through the food. Um, so, lasagna. I said, let me shank it this thing. Do you know that TikTok? <laughs> not, not even. Everyone lied to you, man. <sighs> this looks good, though. <sighs> smells good. I hope it tastes good, brother. I hope it's not a it's not a catfish type of thing. Mm. So you spend seven years, or, no, fourteen years, right? When you're in grade seven, you're like fourteen, thirteen, or however old you are, right? Mm. And then when do you come down to Joburg? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. When do you like okay? When I come down to Joburg, uh, mainly like two years ago, twenty twenty. Really? Twenty twenty two, yeah. For uni. Uni. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is it you coming down alone or my mom dropped me off actually. Yeah. And my uncle lives there as well. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So I visit there frequently, but mainly it's, it's just me. Like it was a brand new life, brand new people. And how Coming how was space. Joburg? Or how has it been? Daunting. I won't lie actually, it's very like what they say about Joburg is very true, like it moves quick. Like Yeah. Um you can get very distracted if you're not very grounded in yourself or very centered on who you are. So I think um, that was kind of where I struggled, especially in the first two years. I'm kind of now, only now, kind of getting the hang of things. So yeah. We, we definitely going to talk about that a bit more, right? But I want to rewind and chat a bit more about high school. Like, hmm. what are some of the craziest memories you have? Firstly, there by the other gender. Like, that's the first time I got rocked, personally. <laughs> Now they they now they cooked me, they cooked yeah. me. Yeah. So do you have any like of those experiences where you're like damn? Nah, I've been I've been cooked, Oaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, Sam. Yeah, yeah. Actually, get Ted. There was this girl. Mm. There was this girl I spoke to for that day. It was a really good conversation. We liked each other. Um, but she was friends with my one friend. Okay. And let's call him. Hmm. Let's call let's him. Call let's him, call him, him damn. Ah. You know, okay. Spa has a girl, and they're in like the same friend group. And he's talking, so he's like my boy at the time. Mm. And he's like, "Hey, you know, apparently you spoke to one. She goes, oh, that nigga. He wouldn't leave me alone.' I was like, "Damn, <laughs> damn, like, yeah." Damn. That was so like you thought biggest. you were cooking? Yeah, I thought I was cooking, Sham. But other than that, I don't have crazy stories. Like again, I was a very in the house. Yeah, yeah, kid, yeah. yeah. So like, when do you start? Like, okay. I, I want a young relationship and you start like dabbling in that space and it wasn't stuff anything like that. I wanted I think it just it fell it came out of nowhere really like my first relationship and it was actually pretty late yeah it was like grade 12 matric yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, towards the end that was like, my first and how would you recommend dating at such an age no why well no but like only because I feel like I started dating at a point where I didn't know exactly what I wanted Mm. And it became more of a distraction than it did a like a, a blessing or anything, you know. I don't know if that makes sense. Mm, mm, like mm. I, I was a lot more distracted than I was focused, um, and it made me really lose a lot. Especially again mm. in the past two years. Yeah, yeah, I lost a lot because of that. So yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So I want to like interrogate this family dynamic a bit more, right? Yeah, yeah. What does the household look like? Is it just you and Mumsy? Is Pops around? Do you have like a sibling? What's cooking? I have, <coughs> I have two older siblings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a brother and a sister. Okay. And a twin sister. So you're the last born. You have a twin? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's insane, yeah, bro. I have, a, I have a twin sister. Okay. Mm. And yeah, she's she was a bitch, but not. Okay, so there's like four of you. Yeah, it's four of us. And how's how is your guys' relationship? I think, um, I'm close. Obviously now with all my siblings. Obviously growing up, I wasn't because I feel like not that I had a different worldview, but it was somewhat different because they were very much. I don't know how to say public kids at school. I don't. That sounds so crazy to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds so stupid to say, but like, yeah, they were very. They were, very, they were very much like the public in school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was very much to my books. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So they didn't share their cloud transferring on? 
Yeah, but no, it wasn't. It wasn't what I wanted. Like it was very much. Hey, because I went to an all boys school. My sister went to an all girls school. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel yeah, like you yeah, can yeah. imagine. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I, yeah. I, I know the vibe. I was just had an all boys, and I feel like, like single sex schools aren't as bad as people think they are. Like they're I the best it. for me. Yeah, like I yeah. think I'd send. Would you send your kids to a to a? Yes. Yeah. Yes. What What are like the best things that happen? Or like when you look back, I think you. I think one thing about an old, an, an old, a single gender school is you unapologetically grow up as yourself. I feel yeah. like when there's when there's girls around, you try to play a certain role. Mm. You try to do certain things. I feel like when it's just dudes around you, you can literally grow up to be yourself fully, without any um, pressure from women, pressure from girls to be a certain way to be a certain someone. You know, so I think for sure I wouldn't be who I am now if it wasn't for the for the old boys school I went to. Yeah, so yeah, for yeah. sure I'd send my kid to. Yeah, to yeah. One, yeah. And you're still like close with the gents that you met there and those like of relationships course, that you fostered. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's super clean, bro. Like I think that's super cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and how's the dynamic with Mumsy? Because obviously a house full of four kids, like I'm sure you guys are stressing your mom mm-hmm. out, bro. My mom's like my best friend, bro. Yeah. No, seriously, my mom's like my best friend. I feel like. Obviously, growing up, they're strict. Mm, mm. But I don't know, bro. I don't know what to say. Like, my mom's like my boy. Like, there's nothing I don't tell my mom. Like, everything I, I would tell a friend is everything I would tell my mother, you know? So, yeah. Like, what's one time that you think of that, like, highlights that for you? Where you're like, damn, Mumsy really pulled through for me here, bro. Like, there's a lot of times I feel like. Obviously financially and all that stuff, but I mean yeah. for me the the moment I realized now my mom's actually the goat. Like we're closer than I thought we were. It was again. Yo, I don't know why I keep bringing this up, yo. But it was after my my last my last breakup. Like, mm. cause me and my mom obviously we speak passingly about stuff like this, but then when it it did happen, I was like, hey, dog. like it's bad. Like yeah, I've been cooked like, a actually, bit. Yeah, like it's it's actually bad. Like I I've never felt that before. But then she's like. Speaking to my mom's actually like speaking to a brick wall. She, she, yeah. she was like, and then I relax. Like, this, this thing passes. Like, <laughs> relax, up <laughs> boy. Relax, dog. It happens to everyone. You'll, you'll be grand. Yeah. 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 Mm. Now, that's dope, bro. So now it's 2020. You said it was when you landed in Joburg or 2021? 20, 2022. 2022. 2022. You land in Joburg. Where are you landing? Red. Res for right. for where are you going? UJ Vits. Ah, that blue school. Yeah. So yeah. you land at Vits to study mm. what? Engineering. I'm not gonna specify which engineering. But engineering. <coughs> yeah. Engineering, yeah. And how's that been? I mean it's engineering, it's not fun. Yeah. But yeah. it's it's been it's been Stressful, yeah, eye opening, um, and a lot harder than what I thought it would be. You know, I thought it was gonna be in a very in and out, straight line thing. It's uh, not, it's uh, not, it's some curves, uh, some color. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I hear you, bro. And I think you, you speak to like a turbulent first few years of uni and adjusting, right? yeah. So, I want us to unpack that. I just need to be put my fingers down. Yeah, put it aside, bro. Put it aside, bro. Like. Um, I mean, obviously it's difficult, dude. I feel like you're you're away from home. Mm. You you have to make new friends, but mm. balance school. Mm. And then at the time, I had a relationship. I had to balance a relationship. So the relationship you're coming from home with it. Yeah. Okay. This yeah. is the matric relationship. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Hi. Okay. Yeah. Advanced uh, love story. Huh? That's a PhD in love right there, bro. <laughs> Not even. So you go, you know, we go to the same varsity. I have to balance that, making new friends, and still figuring out who I am exactly yeah, and kind yeah. of what I want in life. Um, just a lot I'm dealing with, dude. Um, yeah. So you, you, I want us to unpack each of these things individually, right? Yeah. So we'll end with the friendship, start with the relationship. Mm. You come to uni. Right, and you're coming from an all boy school environment. Mm. Obviously, you can still go out here and there, but that wasn't your vibe. So you're obviously not like seeing a bunch of girls on the weekend, right? But you land at Vits, 
And as someone who has been on the campus and on the premises myself, I've been told, or, or I've heard rather, not, not from personal experience, but I've heard that mm. every two minutes is a soulmate passing by, right? And it's someone that you're like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. So does this mean when you land, you're like, damn, I should have no. come here single? <laughs> no, I've never had that actually. Eh? Yeah? Like, obviously, I appreciate... Beautiful woman. I you go on campus. Oh, that's a very attractive person. Mm-hmm. But it's never a thing of like, oh, I wish I was I was just single. It was never that, you know. Mm. Yeah, I don't think. I don't think as much as I at the um, I'm in one now, and at the time I was in a relationship. Um, relationships were never like my main focus. Girls were never like my main focus. Um, so yes, I appreciate. Yeah, that's a beautiful girl, but it was never something I I wished. I could throw myself into no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. how how did it then become a distraction for you? Because yeah. you say it was a, the, the relationship. The rela- right? No, yeah. I really, I was into it. Like, dude, to the point where I even forgot who I was myself. Like, I was too into it. Yeah? And people, obviously my friend said it's because it was like my first relationship, but to that extent was a bit crazy. Like, I mean, paint us a picture, bro. What does being into it, like? does it mean like every day when it's time to eat, you're with Bay? But we are paying. Well, no, like we line, paying, I was yeah. almost, I was almost, I was there a lot. Um, I was putting the needs of someone else really way ahead of my own. You know, like, um, I mean, I feel like the past two years really taught me to really take care of the people around you. Mm-hmm. You have to take care of yourself first, and mm. you can't take care of the people around you. But I feel like I was taking care of them first. And then my life kind of deteriorated in almost every way possible. And I don't even blame them. Like, it's fully on me. Mm. You know, I should have been vigilant enough to know, you know, maybe I need to make sure I'm grand first before I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that deterioration, what does that look like? Does it look like, damn, I'm not going to lectures or I'm being rocked. Like, depression's like, yeah, it's coming. It's calling my name. Depression's crazy. But, like, I was... I was... I wasn't going to lectures as much. Yeah. I was, I don't know. I lived to make sure this person was grand. And that's such a terrible thing to say. Yeah. On camera, but it's just like, I was very, in, like, too into it, dude. Like, the deterioration was like, I was going to lectures. I wasn't taking care of myself the way I should. Um, mentally, I wasn't taking care of myself. My relationship with my friends. Yeah. It was like, I had acquaintances more than I had friends, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She um, was your friend. Yeah. I would yeah. Oh, really yeah, 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 yeah. And was it a mutual thing? Like, this person is as invested as I am, or is part of what made it like difficult to cope with? That you're like, I'm actually just everything for you, and you don't, you know, reciprocate that that energy for me. I feel like, uh, I feel like, especially in the beginning, it was. She was doing, she was playing her part. I was just overplaying mine. Mm. I don't know if that makes sense. Mm. And then towards the end, it was like, end, man. I was, yeah, I just ain't it. Let's wrap it up. Yeah. So who wraps so, it up? You? Uh, her, her. But, but, um, it took, it took her idiot for me to realize, oh, that wasn't actually it for me. And then, when time did come to reconcile, I was like, you know what, dog, I'm actually good. Yeah, we, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, like I'm really good. Like, yeah. Thank you. Um, but I'm, I'm good. Yeah. And then how do we recover from that? Because now I think this leads into the friendship chat. Mm-hmm. Um, you've made these acquaintances. How do you turn these acquaintances to boys? Are they the ones that kind of like support oh, you yeah, through yeah. the, or how does that like friendship element develop? I feel like I feel like I never spent too, as much time with as much as as I was with them. Mm. I never opened up to them as much, and then after all that happened, in fact, I'm just at a, a vulnerable stage, and I just saw how different people were there for me, you know. And I feel like that really got me closer to them. Mm. Mm. So mm. now I have really it's crazy to say, but they're really like family. Like I, I swear, like. A lot, like they're literally like my brothers and yeah, and like my little sisters, like they're friends. They're yeah, just, like, yeah, they, yeah, they've seen me like my weakest point. Like I've never been that. Oh, 
before and I was, and they were there for me. And so, low was just you were just like down bad or like you're not eating, you're not sleeping. Like what does no like your proper low down point? bad, bro? Like my 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 room was a mess. It's just this feels like therapy actually. I feel yeah, like, we're just we're just unpacking, <laughs> bro. We're letting it yeah. all out. No, Sam. Um, yeah, like <coughs> sorry. Uh, my room was just a complete mess. Um, like I was at my proper lows, dude. Like I wasn't again not going to classes, mm. not going to the gym the way I used to. Mm. Um, I stopped working on my goals. Like for a solid like two months, I was just stagnant. Um, and then that's kind of when I started doing TikTok as well. Yeah, around that time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One thing about heartbreak, bro. One thing about how it will cook you into spaces you never thought you'd touch. No, literally, like, I, I started doing TikTok around that point in my life. And then that's kind of where things got, got yeah. better, got better from there. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. mm. I, I suppose then my, my follow-up is as Majita, like, there's almost a taboo around how we discuss emotions. Like, it's a thing of, ah, why are you crying, boy? There's so many other women. Ah, ah. Mm. But it seems like this group of friends specifically were able to kind of be nurturing, which is something that is like weird to say as a gent and yeah. weird to think about. But how do they approach these kinds of conversations? Are they like, bro? I feel like, like any other male friend group and stuff, it's like a joke. Like, got oh, it, wait, you know? Yeah. Good yeah. Guy when your girlfriend left you. Yeah. But I feel like for us, because me personally, I really value. As much as it's weird, I'm a very emotional dude. Like, mm, mm, no, 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 for sure. Yeah, for sure, yeah. For so sure. I feel like I chat a lot about my emotions to my gents. Yeah. And we yeah. open up about a lot of stuff. So as much as there's a time and place for jokes, they know when, oh, this dude is serious. Because I, I don't think I I cry often. I don't cry all the time. Yeah, yeah. So when I do, my friends know it's like, oh, it's damn, damn, so, damn, damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, when was the last time you cried, bro? That's a crazy question. Last time I cried... You will. Did I cry that time? I think. Like. Probably beginning of December ish. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, like, what, what does it like help you? After you cry, like, damn, I feel lighter, or it's just a. Nah, it's like a, involuntary oh. thing, like, damn. No, it's like I I cried. <laughs> they did it, it's whatever. Yeah, like yeah, I yeah, just yeah. cried. Like obviously that means something's wrong. Something has to be wrong. So yeah. It's not like a I feel lighter thing. It's not like I cried a lip. Things go I cry when things are like really bad. Mm. mm, um, mm. Especially emotionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I just know I'm not in a, the the greatest of emotional states if I'm crying. Yeah, 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 yeah. And how often, like, when you're going through this breakup time, are you crying? Oh, daily. Almost daily. Really? It's a regular thing. Like, Damn. a regular thing. Um, and I realized, throughout that whole relationship, actually, only two people ever made me cry. It was my mom and my uncle. I never cried. Yeah? Anything else. Like, dude, I barely cried. But in that relationship, you would never think that. Like, I was crying regularly. Yeah. yeah, even even when things were, like, good, or only after were you crying a lot. Because, you know, sometimes, like, you you love a person to the extent where, like, you're overlooking a lot of things and you're not communicating yeah. a lot of things, but you're suffering silently. Mm-hmm. So they may think things are grand, but they don't know that you you better cry about it and be okay later type of thing. No, no I, wouldn't, I wouldn't cry over... I wouldn't cry over assumptions, I don't think, and I wouldn't cry over, like, things I didn't talk about. yeah. But like blatant, like, hey dog, I don't care. Like blatant, yeah. I don't care about you type of things like that. Yeah. Just like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah. the game we play. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Huh. Yeah, yeah, and I'm never a tip of type of person. Like, I'll never, oh, you did this, I'll do it back. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I never, I never do that. So, damn, bro, mm. I think that's crazy and also very tough. But I think like part of struggle is building these new communities, these new friendships. Mm. Um, so I think it's to some extent something that's necessary, but I want to now chat TikTok. Mm. When are you like? I'm chilling. My next lecture's in thirty minutes. Let me just put my phone here and talk to someone. 
Let me just. It wasn't even like that. Yeah. How does yeah. it? How does it start? It was very much like. Hey, dog. This year already, I was like, it's time. Like, I'm not going to classes. I don't know what's going on. Mm. Like, it's, I'm literally just in my room, mm. doing borderline nothing. Mm. Um, obviously, I'm trying to study, mm, mm, mm. but I don't understand what's going on. Um, so I'm just like, no, it's, let me just go back because I was I was doing videos since like I was 16, I think. Okay. Like I used to be on YouTube. I used to make videos on Instagram. So if we search your name on YouTube, we, we yeah, can go find a, something. You'll find like two videos. Okay. Two years ago, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah, I used to make videos on Instagram. And then it of was a like similar an, nature. Yeah. 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 Okay. It was like, a, but it was like an on and off thing. Like I did it, then I stopped. Mm. Then I did it again. Then mm. I stopped. Then I did it again first day. Then I stopped. Then I was just like you know what? Let me just do it again. And this time I had nothing to do, so I just fully, like for me when I feel like, I feel like when I'm really going through something, I just obsess over some something else mm, mm, to distract mm, me over. Mm, so mm. like when I was sixteen was basketball at the time. Mm-hmm. Now it's like TikTok. So I was just making TikTok videos every day. Like, dude, I was posting three times a day. Yeah. Day. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people are like, damn, you're dedicated. No, I was just depressed. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just depressed, you know. So, um, yeah, I was making videos every day. And that's kind of how I got to my first 10K mm. a week after starting. Mm. 20. Mm. Why don't you just we keep going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then... For you, like, do you ever see yourself converting it? Like, if gigs start paying, ads start paying, like, those kinds of things start coming, do you see yourself being like, okay, maybe I can do this full time? Or, no. No? No. I feel like, as much as it's a blessing and I'm grateful for it, it's not, it's, there's a certain, I don't want to say path I planned out for my life, for my life, but there's a certain direction I want to go in. And as much as this is something I have, fun doing if tomorrow it stops i'll be grand the next day mm, you know mm. like it's fun for me and i'm very grateful for it and i think i want to do it for as long as possible because the money is coming the money is good um so i'll do it for as long as i have to do it for it for as long as i have fun but if i feel like i'm not having fun with this anymore i like having the room to say you know what i'm good yeah you know yeah, yeah. yeah. so when does the first like paid promo come in and i go hmm you i don't want to say which in a way, and I don't know how to say what company, but like I did get a a promo to post for this one company per month, which I which I feel bad for not doing as often. Yeah, oh, yeah. this is so bad. But yeah, I I did get a paid promo for this one company to pay per month, and it was per month. Yeah, I get paid per month. Damn. It was good. Damn. Need that. <laughs> Need good. that. <laughs> Need that. Now we we definitely gonna unpack a bit more about that TikTok journey, mm. um, life journey. And also, apparently, you're a sportsman, you're a b-ball player, and maybe chat about that. Um, just going to take a production break, and then we'll run it back. And we are back. We had a young production break, child that food. And now, we're rocking the new segment with Gatsby. Um, so, as you guys know, I've been asking you guys to send through your confessions, vent, anything that's been going on. Just let me know. And we unpack it on the show. We give you advice. We let you know how to navigate the situation. So today, we have two confessions. One that came directly to me and one that came um, to me through someone else. The first one. Pick a number between one and two. Before I just, and then I'll decide. Two. Two. Two, mm. yeah. Two's heavy. <clears throat> Two's fine. I have a 55-year-old boyfriend. This person is in uni. Okay. I have a 55-year-old boyfriend who is married with kids. He told me he wants to make me his second wife. I really love him and he heals my daddy issues. Should I give him a shot? Ding, ding. I feel like it's a great substitute for therapy at least. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> so what are you telling him? <coughs> no, him. Uh, no, What no, do you no. think should happen? Find a man that really loves you, like a genuine guy, not a, not someone's father, like, <laughs> <laughs> like not someone's father, dude. Like this is a married man. When how do you feel? Yo, I don't want to judge though. That's not. I don't want to judge. Um, no, I don't. I think leave that alone. Loss, man. Leave, leave that alone. Yeah. I I actually have a different perspective, right? I think 
the whole the, there's an issue obviously that is not really like the issue for me isn't really the the age gap or anything like that I mean, it's a crazy age gap, right? Yeah. But it's it's the nature Did of... Did you see 58? Like, 55. I oh, saw it. Saw I guys. saw it, okay. right? I'm but sure. it's the nature of how uni is, is, bro. Like, every Friday, I'm watching people being picked up in AMGs and Range Rovers. Like, it's just it's just the way the game goes, which is crazy, number one. Yeah. But that's not the topic at hand, right? Mm. I'm saying, I think, for assumably someone who's, like, in their 20s, getting married that young... Early 20s, firstly, is crazy. Yeah. So that's why I say don't give it a shot. But secondly, if it's your first marriage, why would you want to be the second option? Mm. So I feel like she's too young that's to be a second wife. Like, yeah. I think maybe later in life, you can be a second wife and, you know, it's Tembu. Because, you know, there's nothing wrong with this Tembu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at that age, and I don't know that this person will be a, a husband. It's giving... Mm. She needs a father figure. And I don't know yeah. how that, that, that dynamic works, bro. So for me, I would say don't. Yeah. Don't 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 give it a shot. Don't give it a shot. How old is she actually? I don't know, bro. It's just a confession. I, I only have the information that's there, bro. So let's say she's like twenty, I don't know, twenty two. Mm. Yeah, I'd Imagine say call cat for advice. That was actually that was a mature answer. I was gonna say no, because he's 55 <laughs> like he's old <laughs> yeah 55 is also crazy like I think the idea of marriage is like it needs to be a lifelong partnership yeah by the time she's 55 he go be gone that's half a life he go be gone yeah. damn okay so final answer Miguel leave that thing alone next one so I'm dating a girl right uh, this confession is from This one came to me directly in the DMs I don't know if you want me to reveal your name But I won't do all that So I'm dating a girl, right? And I like her a lot Not a little But she cheated on me with some guy I know And bro told me she was acting shy So it seemed like it was her first time cheating Now, she doesn't know that I know But the thing is I've cheated on her a lot With different girls But I still like her so, should I just mise um, the cheating or should I just end things? Dude, there's not a relationship anymore, dude. Like, eh. <laughs> Let's be real. Do you think That's cheating is a deal breaker? Anymore. Yes. Why? Yes, because I, like, um, I feel like what me and you have... I feel like if you look at me and you say you love me, that's a promise. That's a promise to say you're going to be committed to me. Um, you're going to respect me. You're going to mm-hmm. make sure that I don't look like a body outside. Yeah. Yeah, but then if you break that promise, it's not. What is it then? Now you tell me you love me. What is what is what are you saying to me? I think like that's not that's a very heavy approach for me, right? Like I Yo, think you're telling me you'd stay your wife twenty years. She cheats on you. Yes. You think about staying. Yes, bro. Cause cause there's 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 deeper things at play, right? Like especially and this is a crazy thing to say. <laughs> None of my boys knew. Then I'm staying, bro. Because thing no, is, like, the no. love we built is so. What deep. love? If if it was really important to her, she wouldn't have cheated cheated on you. But that that that's reductionist, bro. That is How? reductionist. How? Okay, would you cheat on a girl you you really care about? You love? No, this is not about me, brother. <laughs> We're having conversations. Don't be so much because it's a camera. I'm asking a genuine, genuine question. Mm-hmm. Would you cheat on a girl you genuinely like? Genuinely love? As somebody with. A history of infidelity right mm. um it becomes almost like a habitual practice it becomes something that like even You're when breathing to an extent bro <laughs> like even when you you are like nah i want to be serious you just your body just don't want to be serious with you you know what i mean um and it's a crazy thing to say but it's not something i do now anymore like uh. History. You had to throw that out. Um, I had to because yeah. obviously it took a long time to break that and come out of that. Um, but it isn't something that's impossible to come out of, mm-hmm. right? Um, so what I'm saying is that kind of thing is um, somewhat common. Okay, but do you think do you think someone could respect you the same after they know? Oh, I cheat on. So my thing isn't that the relationship will be the same. 
Uh. It's just that the relationship doesn't have to end. But do you think it's worth going through that? I think so. Like, you know what it is? I saw this Reddit thing. This hand is like, you know, she went on a girl's trip. Well, the, the guy's like, my wife went on a girl's trip. And then she called me like at 1 a.m. crying, saying she just cheated on me. Um, and she, apparently the wife just wanted to see if she still got it when this guy was flirting. Then it ended up going to the room, blah, 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 blah. Um, and she was like crying, really apologetic. He calls his mom. His mom's like, nah, give her a chance. Basically beggars that type of thing. Mm. And for me, it is this person sees that they made a mistake. And it's that. It's a mistake. Bro. Okay, but here's the thing, though. Is that that even if she called me, even if my wife called me and said, "Hey, I cheated on you," okay, we're done. Like, we're done, right? But my brother's not playing. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> wrap it up quick. No, no we're finished. Seven. But like, he had to find out. This girl, this girl never said, "Hey, I flopped." Like, no, he had to go. Who's that detective? Sherlock Holmes. He had to. He had to go find out. Uh, fair, fair, but I'm saying generally, right? Like, if it's someone who's remorseful and sees it as a mistake, then there's a conversation to be had. What conversation? But not a serial cheater, bro. Like, okay, let me ask you something, right? Yeah. You and your wife have, like, <coughs> joint savings, whatever the case is. And there's this kid's, like, college and university fees here. Everything is basically planned out in these things, right? Mm. In this account. One day you wake up, she blew it. Is it over? Yeah. Yo, ah, strict boy. <laughs> now nah, you ready, Wait, bro? Wait, how much money? You're is trigger it? happy. Wait, how much <laughs> money is in it? I don't know, just enough to secure you guys, like to secure your kids' future and secure your guys' future for any day. Okay, so now my future isn't secured because you you decided. Yes, yes, but is it over? Okay, no, Sam. Over money. <clears throat> over money. No, but like I'd be mad for like a solid, a, a hot minute, like. That's what I'm saying. That's like, the same yeah, thing. She no. promised. She promised that you guys are planning your future. She promised that you guys are investing, mm-hmm. and she chowed okay, the money, bro. You don't, think, you don't think there's something very intimate about sex? There is. It yeah, is a very is intimate like, act. Money, you can lose money and make it back. Sex, like that's an that's an experience. You can't take back an experience, a very intimate experience, with someone else. It's like it's like me. It's like me having a very stressful day, like a seriously, like my mom dies and I don't call my wife, first, I call my best friend, like my female best friend. Also, that's, also, that's like, yeah, <laughs> like, bro, that's like, <laughs> it's not the same. Bro. It is the same. Why would you use that as an example? Because that's such an intimate. It's like a. Why wouldn't you call me? Like, maybe, your wife, maybe your, your hand is a bit years, like your wife of twenty years decides to call her bra and not you. And that wouldn't rub you the wrong way. Maybe, maybe I'm like, I'm cold hearted, bro. So maybe she knows that's not my forte. The point I'm making is that the promise <laughs> is the same. Because for me, money isn't an easy thing to make. Because I, for one, respect money a lot. Because it's very difficult to make money. Very easy to spend it, right? Mm. Like they, there's a lot that needs to go into it. And there you're undermining everything we've built, bro. Okay, then what would make you leave somebody... Immediately, che- if cheating isn't it, you know what the what my what my problem is, bro. I'm not the type that can just leave. Like I don't have it in me to say, "Oh, you did that. I'm out of here." I want to see if you really did. That. <laughs> like if you can do it twice. Like if if you're that good at it, you want them to make it sure. Twice. Yeah, it's like until I really see that. Nah, I'm hurt, hurt. Nah, then I'm staying, bro. Like I'm gonna stick beside you, babe. Uh, as long as nobody know our little secret. Then we good. But here's my thing with this confession in particular. Yeah. I think, forget the hun. I'm worried about the friend. Because what do you mean my friend told me? Like, it's not even a thing of my friend heard that your girl cheated on you. Mm. The person who your girl cheated with is coming to you. Isn't that the real concern? She seemed shy. As my boy. You knew she was my girl, but you still cheated. Or like you still... Obviously, there's just, there's just the whole... There's misalignment of loyalties everywhere in this guy's life, obviously. But but I feel like we can mise that. Like, uh, no, no I think that's the, that's the worst infraction right here, bro. What the boy did is crazy. It's but I think that's a lot more common than you think, eh? Like that's, a, that's a lot more common than you think. What? 
like like guys wanting your girl like in Tanga, like that's just like Mm-mm. saying it's reality is crazy. It it is though. Would you end your friendship with your boy if that happened? Yeah, we wouldn't be boys anymore. We wouldn't be close, but we. I still have his number. Like, we wouldn't chill the way we used to, of course. Of course, but yeah. I'm saying end it in the same way that you would the girl. Yeah, but like, like cut it off completely. Yeah, assuming it's possible. Like, assuming you know, it's not like a we in this group of friends together. We have to chill. You guys had your own like friendship. Through whatever mechanism, but you're close, like you're boys, boys. I don't know. I've never experienced like my boy, boy, like my best friend thing, something like that. But like, if he did, obviously, like, like we wouldn't be boys anymore. Like, of course not. Yeah. But that's not what I'd be mad about. Like, oh, you're just, you're just a snake. That's why we're not gonna be friends anymore. But my girl, like, you, dog, ah, not, I don't know. And I think that would hurt me more. What the girl? The girl. I don't know. I think, I think the friend would. I think the friend would rock me for me personally. Yeah. Um, especially because, like, it's not something I do anymore, but sometimes your friends know more. Like, you, you'll be more vulnerable with your friends than you would with your girl or when you're going through things and your friends are helping you out. So you were there listening to me, bro, but you were plotting. That's, that's like, you were looking funny. at the way in. Like, I was telling you, yeah, and then she did this, and you're like, oh, boy, hard. And then after that, you texted her, yo, the bum just left. Uh, I, I get that. No, I get that. So I'm saying that he shouldn't end things. I think he should. Why? Bro? I think he, you just now said you you cut off your friend. Yeah, he should end things with his boy, but not the girl. Nah, <laughs> they're cut from the same cloth, bro. They're twins. I'm so good. It's like everyone in this room is having the same reaction. They're I'm twins, happy. bro. He said he likes her. And clearly, like, he he doesn't really want to leave her. Because if he really wanted to leave her, he'd be gone. He'd be out of here, like, long ago. He should be go- No, but he's saying, I don't want to leave, leave her because I've done the same thing. So it's like, oh, she's paying me back. That's exactly. What that's what I'm saying. But then that's not the ground you should build a relationship on. It's not like that. Oh. But this is not a relationship, bro. We've okay, seen that this house is falling. Then what are we doing here? What's what's being constructed? Passing here? time. Go watch a, a series. Go watch a show. Why are you passing time with the relationship with someone's child? They're doing it to each other. Now, like, you see, if it was like a, if it was a perfect. But how do you know this guy's <coughs> intention? What if this guy's like, hey, no, I see a wife in this girl. There's no wife there. Yeah, but then he'll have to find that out the hard way. If he leaves now, he'll never know. He'll he'll always. He'll always be on that what if tip, bro. Like, damn, what if I gave another chance? Because you know what it is. You know what? Let me tell you one thing I hate about, like, the way relationship was. You'll be with someone who doesn't treat you that well. Is like, maybe in terms of how happy you are, you're sitting that- at a five. And then you leave, bro. And you see a model girlfriend in this person. Like, their next partner, their next relationship is beautiful. You built but, that. But don't you think you have to leave for her to be like that? She'll never be there for you. You have to be the, list, the lesson she learns, though. Nah, 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 They you, didn't hurt you enough. You, you need to get hurt a little bit more. You don't, you know. No, trust me, I've been cooked, bro. <laughs> I've been cooked, then recooked. <laughs> uh? <laughs> it's fine. So, I don't know what advice you want to take. Some people are saying end it. I say end it. Even you got that. Uh, why are you cheating? But I say end it regardless. It's not a relationship anymore. That's just. That's just two people doing relationship stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the companionship element. Yeah. So, now on to the topic of the day. Yeah? Um, um, I was reading a story, like a very sad story the other day um, about uh, like a, a young girl that was kidnapped or has been missing for a while. Um, they're suspecting the parents for, of selling her off and stuff like that. Uh, and I don't know which country it is, but there's a country now that just overturned a law against female genital mutilation. Like the 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 they just passed that law in. What, what's the country? Can you find the country, please? Um, yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> I bring this up to say that I think 
even even outside of that, like there's a TikToker who speaks a lot about their family and their parents and like the things that their parents do to them and how traumatized they are and 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 and. Um, and in general, there's some sort of trauma that people house from their parents or lack thereof. So, I think the world is filled with very bad parents, and I don't think that everyone should be a parent. Be a parent, yeah. right? If in the hypothetical we could construct a world where we limit who can have kids, what would the criteria be? Like, I've actually, I've had this conversation. With, with yeah, no, you've been waiting for this one. No, no, I think, I think before you have kids, before you have kids, obviously, there should be a mental mental health check on those people. People should have lessons on how to raise a child. Mental health check in what sense? Like, I feel like a lot of the trauma we experience from from our parents is trauma they haven't dealt with. I don't know if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like, um, for example, I've seen moms hate their daughter. Not hate. Hate is crazy. But you can see an obvious bias between their daughter and their son. Yeah. I don't know why. Maybe it's because you were raised with brothers or whatever. But that needs to be dealt with before you have a kid. You know? Do you think though that? Oh, the country was Gambia. Um, mm. What, like, do you think that someone can reach that stage where they're healed enough? Do you think that you could pass the mental health check, mental wellness? No. Check right now. No, not right now. I think, I think it's something I've always said. Actually, I think before I have a kid, I want to go to therapy to deal with certain things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't want to... Have you, have you never been? I have, but I don't think I've been enough to like... So it's like once off, like tea bag. In it's like out. a calm thing, like nothing crazy. Calm thing is crazy. <laughs> Call it therapy, like a calm little motive. <laughs> no, it's like Get a... ready with me, call yeah. a calm little event. <laughs> me and my therapist, you know, like a young hour. <laughs> no, I mean, like I haven't gone to like this deep rooted issues that I even, I don't even know about. Like mm. so, so certain things I react, like certain so, situations that I react to. I'd be like, why did I react to that? Mm, you know? Mm. I feel like everybody should go to therapy before having a kid, obviously. But I don't think everybody's built to be a parent. Yeah, so like, if someone is part, like, someone has all the other criteria, but they fail, say, the mental wellness check, you say no, they shouldn't have a kid. Mm. Okay, so it's the mental health chat, like, not even mental health, but mental Cause, cause, wellness cause in relation many, to the many, child. How many kids? Do you, how many people do you know who are taking care of, like, <coughs> bare minimum wise? Like, they have clothes, they have food, mm-hmm. roof over head, they go to school, but this person is just not grand mentally, and that's because every day they're getting abused by their parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think <clears throat> I think mental health is the most important thing. I think um, someone who has all the money in the world still might not be fit to have a child compared to someone who lives a normal. Uh, middle class life you know? yeah, yeah 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 i don't know i think passing down of trauma is like a really difficult thing to deal with as a child um but it's also equally a difficult thing to avoid as a parent right because the first life you don't live different lives the life you live yeah. as a child is the life you'll live as a parent and so it's not like you've had a script or a different like deck of cards dealt to you as a parent than you had as a child. So that. you're still living the same life and it's still your first time living life in the same way that it's your first time. But I'm not saying be perfect now. I'm not saying go be go now and be like this perfect human being, but I'm just saying there's certain things that you... I'm just saying have the skills to recognize when you're not doing the things you should be doing. I don't know. Like if I'm wrong, I feel like as a parent, I should recognize, oh, in this situation, I, I was wrong. What's the biggest thing you'd want to correct? Like as For a, me, myself? Mm. If you were to become a parent, like, I think I'd be very involved. I think I'd be too involved. Yeah. I think it would be like, she told me. I think I think especially for my daughter, she told me, oh, um, this and this happened to me. I think I do too much. I, I, she's not going anywhere. You're staying in the house. Like I, I think I have to solve that. Yeah. I think I'd be too good, too controlling. I think as a parent. Why? Are you scared of... I'm scared of the people around me not being safe, I mm. think. Yeah, yeah. And I think I do everything... I think I do too much to make sure they're safe. I don't know if that makes sense. So would you be happy if your daughter started dating a guy like you? Yes. Wow. 
So yeah. humble. I really like that approach. <laughs> Very humble with it. No, if I'm being honest, yeah, like yes, yes, I, I would be. Yeah, I would be happy. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Hmm. Would you? Would I be happy if my daughter did a guy like me? Yeah. Mm, where I am right now, yeah, 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 for sure. Last year, oh girl, <laughs> leave that man alone. Run, run. Mm. But this year, I think for sure, like I think I'm in a much better space. I'm in a much more calm space, um, and I'd be happy for her to date someone like me. Um, yeah, 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 for sure, actually. Yeah, why do you think that is? Why do I think it is? Yeah. Um, that I'm in a better place? No, why do you think it would be good for her to date a guy like you? Like, why, what do you, what do you, what's, what's different about you? I think I'm a very, like, I don't think I'm, I'm necessarily different per se, um, but I'm, I'm just very giving, like, I, I'm very loving, like, you know, like, damn. Make sure that you you happy, you fed. You want to talk about emotions? Let's unpack. You know, like I, I'm I'm a very present person in the people. Like if you're in my inner circle and there's ever an issue, mm. I will be there. Like I'm not the let's sit down, box of tissues, let's cry it out type of person. Like I can't necessarily express my emotions outward when I'm supporting you, but you'll feel emotionally supported if that makes sense. I guess. You seem like you're unsure, bro. I guess, like I'm, I'm hearing you. Yeah, so I think that's that's the biggest thing that people don't have. Like, not enough people listen, and I, I think I'm a good listener. Like, I can hear, I listen, be like, oh, okay. Yeah. And I don't always speak back. Sometimes I just be like, mm. <laughs> don't speak back. Yeah, you know, sometimes I think he's a good you just need to listen. He just doesn't speak back. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes you just need someone to listen to you, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and mm. I think I'm a good listener. Most of the time, because sometimes the things I'm told is like, whoa, what must I tell you here? So I'm just like, yeah, that, that seems like it's hard. Mm. Yeah, so that's why I think I'd be happy for my daughter to date someone like me. Why would you be happy? Because I just know she'd be taken care of. I just feel, mm. like, I just feel like I know. No, it's not like, not like, not like in that like financial way, like obviously not yet. But I just know she wouldn't, she wouldn't get hurt. Like, for yeah. a fact, like, I know for a fact, oh, nah, this guy's not doing anything. Like, if he's like me, let's say one of these guys like you to a T, no fault. Yeah, this guy, he's not going to do anything wrong. The worst that might happen, the worst that might happen is like, um, obviously, the space I'm in now, the priorities might not be relationships per se. Mm. Like, for me, I think I'd still choose my goals over. Yeah, but I think sure. a good relationship won't put you in that position, like where you have to choose between your goals and that person. If anything, they'll be driving you towards your goals. For sure, but don't you think when you get married at a certain point, it gets to a point where it's like, dude, you have a wife and a kid now. You have wife, kids, house to take care of. You're really going to give, you're going to risk all of that just to start your barbershop company. I think so. Like, And in a, in a real... Um, well, not real to like say that others are fake, but in a good relationship, your partner will be willing to support that. Because remember, it, it seems like a risk if it seems like you're unlikely to succeed. If your partner sees that you say, Bae, um, I'm going to start cutting hair. I'm going to leave my seven-figure job to go cut hair. And she's seen you cut your own hair. It's like, it's okay, babe. Let's not do that. You know what I mean? But if she's like, I see your vision, like I support it and I can get behind that. Then it's not that big of a risk. But do you think talent is the only factor to success? Because mm. you could be good at something. It doesn't mean you're going to be famous or make money. I, I don't think it's, it, it, I don't think talent is directly related to your success, right? But I think it is directly related to how much people will support the come up. Like if someone doesn't see if you say tomorrow that I want to be a soccer player, and as your boy, I don't see the skills for you to be a soccer player, mm. then I won't support the come up like that. Even if you work hard and you end up being successful. Okay, but how many people do you know who are good at soccer right now who aren't playing professionally? Because I know quite a few. A lot. Exactly. And a lot. I'm, and that's what I'm saying. I think, I think that's why you're going to quit seven figures to go start cutting hair no one knows you you have no record of cutting hair you're just gonna go buy a building but it, remember 
it's your first time cutting hair, but it's not your first time first timing. Like your first, you you once were new at a job and no one knew you, and now <laughs> you're at the top, so you can climb up, bro. You've done it before. Just rock it again. But that's such an idealistic way to think. Uh, it's the only way to think, I think, because everything think, in the world will, will tell you not to think that way. I think you can trust yourself for sure. I think you can start something and trust yourself. But when what you're losing, I don't know, when what you're losing weighs a lot more than what you could earn. And this is what you could earn. It's not even like what you're going to. Like, oh, you're definitely mm. going to get this. And even if you do get it, it could be 20 years down the line. Mm. Your kids are graduating two years from now. They need varsity, varsity money. You're going to start your, your barbershop company. You're telling me you're going to make seven figures in two years. Profit, I'm telling way, you profit. I don't mean revenue I mean profit I mean I'm telling you To take the leap bro That's what I'm saying Like I think sometimes And a, a, a supportive partner Will help you take the leap Because you need to No longer exist In where you are But start existing In where you want to be So your partner needs to know that I'm leaving seven, seven figures Which means we can't live The seven figure lifestyle bro Like We're, we're chowing bread Seven days of this week and we used to go out and we used to have a driver who used to take us out every day. You remember you have kids? Hmm? You remember you have kids, right? I and have kids. Up, yeah. I'm saying you're, this is your, your... I'm saying I put you in a situation like this is your wife. You have kids, a house to take care nah, of. No, they'll be strong. They'll be strong. Bread ain't never kill nobody, boy. <laughs> Bread ain't never kill nobody. But I think there's definitely a lot to say about like the factors that influence success. Um, and I think you've also from a personal perspective given us a lot to think about in terms of balancing that success um your life journey and also how private you've managed to keep it is quite inspiring and i think that's also key that your whole life doesn't need to be on social media for you to have a social media presence um and i think that's something that the chef should take away from today's episode that just live your life get heartbroken when you touch university and it'll all work out thanks for tuning in to yet another episode of Recipe for Success. Shout out.